it is a furious war of words between the White House and Congressman Joaquin Castro, blasting him. He's uh, not only a congressman, but he's the campaign chairman for Democratic presidential candidate Julian Castro, blasting him for publicly posting, tweeting the names of prominent San Antonio Trump donors. The campaign telling Fox News they reported Castro's tweet to Twitter, arguing it violates the platform's abusive behavior provision, which states that you cannot, quote, engage in the targeted harassment of someone or incite other people to do so. Let me save everybody a lot of time here. Twitter isn't going to come to the rescue. You have to be a leftist for Twitter to protect you or apply their rules. Otherwise, they won't. The Texas congressman's tweet included a list of San Antonio residents, business owners, prominent people who have donated to the Trump campaign along with the names of their employers and other contact information. Quote, sad to see so many San Antonians as 2019 maximum donors to Donald Trump, Castro tweeted, along with the Twitter handles of several local business people. Quote, their contributions are fueling a campaign of hate that labels Hispanic immigrants as invaders. The Castro tweet has the names of 44 Texans who gave the federal maximum of $2,800 this year to the Trump re-election campaign. This is, this is what uh, the mafia used to do when they would come into your business and look around and say to you, nice place you got here, be a shame if something happened to it. Now, right off the bat, I don't think that Joaquin Castro has broken any laws. And as I said, I don't think Twitter is going to do anything about the tweet or find that it violates their policies. But what do you think about it? So it's not a legal thing. It's not a Twitter thing. But how do you take it? 210-599-5555. Uh, it was somebody said at a rally, as you know, uh, shouted out that Hispanic immigrants should be shot. The president laughed and made a joke about it. Uh, the chance of send her back just this month. It's, it's very clear this is what, what the federal government itself uh, has called in guidelines racism Hate and speech. white supremacy. And if you were funding ads that do that, then you're exactly right. It seemed to me that Hispanics have a right to know. Okay, I'll tell you this. Uh, I've, I've spent as much time with the Castro brothers as probably anybody in the media. And they are book smart guys, but they are not street smart guys. They have the finest education money can buy, but they've never been great on instincts and reflexes. I've known a lot of people like this in my life, and I'm not... I'm not trying to be disparaging. I, I, a lot of my friends went to Ivy League colleges and universities. They are book brilliant. But I'm the guy they call because they don't know how to jumpstart their car. You know what I mean? I think that the other thing you got to know about the Castros is they're more ambitious than anything else. Ambitious is the, is the dominant feature with these two. And they're chameleons. Ambition kind of leads to that. They will mold themselves and modify what they do and how they do it to the moment. Remember when Julian Castro first broke onto the city political scene, uh, he wasn't well received by business leaders and big donors. He remade himself into somebody they would be very comfortable with, and that's how he became mayor. Now he's morphed again into this, you know, raise my hand, socialism, democratic socialism guy, because that's now where it's at. Ambitious. Not street smart. So what Joaquin has done here is he's drawn a line where you can't have it both ways. Does he not realize that a lot of people 
in Texas, and, and for that matter, around the country, who give to President Trump also give to Democrats? Does he not realize that business owners routinely donate to politicians in both parties? It's rare for a business not to do that. And finally, and let's be very honest, he can say all he wants, I'm just getting the information out there. I'm just calling people's attention. I'm not, I'm not saying anything should be done. He said on MSNBC, my post was really just a lament. Does anybody really believe that he doesn't expect a reaction from you or the public against these businesses? Does anybody really believe that he just put this out there just to be informational, like it's a caption on a photograph? Uh, Steve is on, 550 and 1071 KTSA. Steve, good afternoon. Hey, Jack, how are you doing? Good, thank you. How are uh, you? This Castro clown, uh, this is slimy, it's reckless, and it's hypocritical. You know, it, it's just dirty politics. Uh, it's reckless because, I mean, it's right there in San Antonio where we have the guy knocking the, the MAGA hat off the kid and throwing the drink on him. You know, obviously, you know, San Antonio and, and around the country, Trump incites violence, but against Trump supporters. You know, and, and Castro has to know this. And if he doesn't, he's too stupid to be in politics. Well, like I said, he's a he's a book smart guy. He's not a street smart guy. Um, he well, knows exactly. that he is not. So he knows that he hasn't violated the law here. But what he doesn't have is good political instincts for how people will receive it. And it's blowing up in his face, Steve. You're not the only one who and, thinks and, uh, that this was slimy is exactly uh, the right word for it. And let me add something else. What are we talking about right now in the gun debate? Red flag. What does that refer to? It refers to people who uh, are acting out or seem to be volatile, building towards some kind of outburst that could be deadly. If we're serious about that, and I really don't think we are, then this would not be the time to name and shame political donors. So you can do it, and he can hide behind the defense that it's publicly available information, but it's not that he broke the law by tweeting it, it's that he's pointing to these people, and he's pointing them out to who knows who. Red flags. These are prominent donors, most of them public figures, or many of them public figures, but their money is being taken and used to fuel these hateful ads, and it has put millions of people in this country in fear. There are people right now that are living in fear, and I don't think the president understands that. I don't think those donors understand it, but they need to understand what their money is going to. And See, I, I love the way he's trying to help the people who are donating money. They don't, they don't know what they're giving money to. I know, but they don't know. Bill Miller's doesn't know. The owner of Bill Miller's doesn't know, but I know. And my money's on the owner of Bill Miller's. Who, by the way, I got a, an email from a listener, a very loyal listener, uh, who says her teenage daughter works at Bill Miller's. And she says they were swamped yesterday and had way more business than they would normally have at that time. I, I forget what shift her daughter was working. I think it was evening. And she said, I really don't know any other reason. There was no promotion going on. There was no sale going on. She said, all I can think is that maybe a lot of people are going there as a counter reaction to the tweet because uh, the owner of Bill Miller's, the founder of Bill Miller's, is one of those that's being named and shamed by Joaquin. Ron is on 550 and 1071 KTSA. Ron, good afternoon. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Good, good. I just wanted to tell you that I'm Hispanic, and as Hispanic, I'm very uh, disgusted of the behavior of the Castros. And I would like to voice that uh, the majority of Hispanics, or at least the ones I know, we have a different standard of morals. We will never go that low for a political gain. Well, and I, I believe you speak for a lot of people, Ron, but, you know, uh, that, that's why I say he's not a real street smart politician. He, his, his smarts are book smarts. He's very ambitious. He and his brother, uh, they, they'll do anything and say anything and be anything if they think it gets them elected, but I, I don't think they played this one very well at all. 
Yeah, I, I don't think an experience is a, a, an excuse for a low morals. You know, that's a, what they do, what they did is, is something that uh, will remain as a bookmark for a lack of morality. But see, this is all, and Ron, thank you for the call, this is all that the Democrats have right now. And, and by the way, you're hearing white supremacist, white supremacist, white supremacist, because the word racist has been flogged to death. So white supremacist is the new word, the new put down, the new, you know, that's it. We can't talk anymore. I, I have nothing more to say to you. I was thinking today, white supremacy has always been something on the dark fringes of American life. I mean, it's always been there, but it's always been a very, very obscure. I mean, you probably don't even know anyone who's a white supremacist. But it's been dragged out, the label has, and applied all over the place by these Democrats. And they've got nothing else to talk about. They've got no other way to run against this president. And the idea is that if you oppose what they want to do, or if you support what he wants to do, or you donate to his campaign, that's because you're a white supremacist. Uh, if you uh, believe in rule of law, you're a white supremacist. If you believe in strong borders, if you believe that people should come to this country legally, you're a white supremacist. And of course, as with the word racism, before it lost all of its power, A, it shuts down the debate, and B, no one wants to be called that. So the hope is that you will kind of be stunned into silence or, or convinced or suppressed in your opinions and maybe also in your voting. I, I have no doubt that a lot of this, a lot of what we're seeing right now, all this static, is to discourage you, to make you think, oh... Politics is so ugly. Elections are so ugly. This Trump has stirred up all this stuff, and I just want no part of it. I just want to go home and, and, and bury my head under a pillow or watch a, a funny movie or be with my kids. And th the hope is that, that maybe you will be, if not cowed, at least discouraged from getting out and voting. I don't think that will happen, but that's what I think they hope will happen with all of this.